A lot of people on social media who obviously we don't know who they are. They have a pseudo name on there and they just spout off about anything, you know, and they really know nothing. I've seen that so many times. That's why I don't respond to so many things. So many people throw bullets. Oh, this guy, and that and that and that. They don't know what they're talking about. They have no information. They just want to hear themselves talk. They want others to be impressed by what they say. Maybe they're lonely. Maybe they're insecure. Who knows what the reason is? But it's always better when you speak to know what you're talking about or don't say anything at all. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Once again, undisclosed location, not in the studio, but some good things are happening here and you'll find out about them pretty soon. It's Wednesday and we're going to start something new. Every Wednesday is going to be Wise Guy Wisdom Wednesday. Now, why am I starting this? Well, I had done this on social media yeah, maybe about a year ago and people really enjoying it. I was given some words of wisdom. I've really been thinking about this every day and I mean every day. I get so many comments, emails, text messages from people thanking me People that have watched my testimony, you know, when I praise God, tell my story. People that have heard me on social media say a few things, try to give the benefit of my experience to others. People within my crew, within my inner circle. I get basically inundated with this on a daily basis. And you know what? I love it. Man, it makes me feel good. I've learned through this experience that it is much more satisfying to give, to help somebody than it is to receive. What else can I get? You know, I've got everything. I've been blessed. I have wife, children, you know, pretty good life. I mean, you know, God has been very good to me. So when I hear from people that benefited from things I have to say or from something that I might have done, it's just so satisfying. It's what keeps me going. So every Wednesday now, we're going to do Wise Guy Wisdom Wednesday when I'm going to be the benefit of my experiences in a way that hopefully can help you in your life, whether it be in your business, your personal life, you know, whatever it might be. I want to share my experiences with you. And I love to hear your comments back. You know, obviously on, on YouTube, you can have comments, give them back. If there's a particular subject that you want me to deal with that maybe I haven't touched upon, let me know about it and we'll deal with it. If you got an experience in your life that maybe, you know, you're going through some struggles or some tough times, let me know about it. I'll try to help you in a blanket situation. So what I say might be pertaining to you directly, but guaranteed there are other people going through the same struggles and challenges that you are. So today I want to tell a little story, you know, I learned so many things from my dad. You know, my dad was kind of like my King Solomon, Solomon who wrote the book of Proverbs, one time king of Israel, very wealthy guy, very, very wise man. Uh, my dad for a time was my Solomon. I looked up to him. He gave me great advice many, many times, taught me a lot, a lot of things that helped me throughout my mob career in a good way, kept me alive, kept me able to succeed. And then when I left the life, those same characteristics didn't leave me in many ways. Now, I've made mistakes along the way when I violate certain things that I shouldn't have done, but really it's been helpful. And I'll never forget my dad. He always used to tell me, Michael, don't talk on the telephone. The phone is a cop. He said, don't ever trust the telephone. People are listening all the time. Keep your mouth shut. Be silent. And I remember in my house, in my house in Long Island, we had moved from Brooklyn. Whenever my dad wanted to talk to me about something he didn't want anybody to know, when we were in the house, okay, he would take me in the bathroom. He would shut the door. He would turn both faucets on. He would tell me, lean into it. And he would start flushing the toilet with one hand as he was talking to me. I thought it was crazy. I was saying, Dad, he said, Mike, you don't know if there's a bug in the house. We don't know who's listening in. And you know what? There was a bug in the house. It was installed in the kitchen of the house in the wall when the house was being built. So my father thought of that and he didn't want us ever to be caught on tape or on a, a bugging device saying something that we shouldn't say. He also told me, Michael, be very, very careful. If you don't know something, don't talk about it. Be slow to speak. Be a good listener. If he said that to me once, he said it a hundred times. He also told me, Mike, in this life, be slow to condemn somebody. Don't be the first one. You're going to be in a position, you know, where you're going to have to make judgment on people. Don't be the first one to condemn someone. Because he said to me, I'll never forget, he used to say, this life is like a wheel. It turns. Who's on the bottom today may be on the top tomorrow, and he may be deciding your fate. 
And he's going to remember that every time you sat down, you were the first one to pass judgment. And I've saw that happen so many times in my life. You know, all the main guys, all the tough guys, all the guys who wanted to kill first, who wanted to condemn, who wanted, they were the first ones to go. The Roy DeMeos of the world, first ones to go because when it came their turn, there was no mercy, none whatsoever. And in other circumstances, ah, give him a pass. You know, he's not a bad guy, just dumb. He made a bad mistake. Give him a pass this time. I can't tell you in the 20 years that I spent in that life how many times I witnessed things like that. So today, my message to you, I love the book of Proverbs. It's an Old Testament Bible book. It doesn't matter if you're not of the Christian faith. When you hear something that's intelligent by someone who is intelligent, you pay attention. Hey, if Buddha said something that I think is intelligent, because he's not a Christian, I'm not going to dismiss it. Well, maybe he doesn't have the same beliefs I, I have, but he said something intelligent makes a lot of sense. I'll give you an example. Listen to this. I am the wisest man alive, for I know one thing, and that is, I know nothing. And that was said by Socrates. He wasn't a Christian, not to my knowledge. But understand what he said. I am the wisest man alive, for I know one thing, and that is, I know nothing. Now, I'll tell you, you know, without being offensive, this could apply to a lot of people on social media who obviously, we don't know who they are. They have a pseudo name on there, and they just spout off about anything, you know, and they really know nothing. I've seen that so many times. That's why I don't respond to so many things. So many people throw bullets. Oh, this guy, and that, and that, and that. They don't know what they're talking about. They have no information. They just want to hear themselves talk. They want others to be impressed by what they say. Maybe they're lonely. Maybe they're insecure. Who knows what the reason is? But it's always better when you speak to know what you're talking about or don't say anything at all. Proverbs, okay, chapter 17, verse 28. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. If you don't know what you're talking about, why would you talk? Somebody around you is going to know that you don't know what you're talking about. But if you keep quiet, they don't know what you're thinking. You know, I always say this. When I was at a sit-down, there were times when I was the smartest guy in the room. I didn't want anybody to know that. I'd keep my mouth shut. I let everybody talk because they thought I didn't know what the subject was or I wasn't in command of the situation. But I knew exactly. I was just letting them bury themselves. And then I struck and I put them in their place. There were times when I wasn't the smartest person in the room. But I didn't want anybody to know that either. And when I'm silent, they don't know what I'm thinking. They don't know if, you know, what I know. But as they're talking, what happens? They're educating me. Now I know how to respond because they gave me all the information. Silence is golden. There was a song by Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons, who I love, by the way. I love that group. Love Frankie Valli. Silence is golden. Trust me, people, it is. If you don't know what you're talking about, keep quiet. And even if you do, it's not always wise to spout off right away. It's beneficial to keep quiet. Okay, another proverb from Solomon. Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. You know how many times people get in trouble because of their own mouth, because of the things they say? You know, look, I'm going to be honest with you. Our president today, come on. When you look at this whole Afghanistan things, how many times did he contradict himself? How many times did he make mistakes, serious mistakes? How many times did his own security people, his own organizations went against him? He had diarrhea of the mouth. He didn't know what he was talking about. And now he's being called upon. And you know what? A lot of bad things, a lot of chaos, a lot of tragedy has happened as a result. And please don't start with, oh, you're a Trumpian. You know, look, people, you got to take things as they are today. People have to bear responsibility for the mistakes that they make and not blame others. If President Biden would have thought before he spoke, it might have been a different situation. People might have looked at him differently. If he would have been a good listener and paid attention to some of the people that were giving him information about what was going on in Afghanistan, we might have had a different result. But he was headstrong, whatever he wanted to talk, trying to ingratiate himself with people, trying to look strong, be the man. Well, he wasn't, was he? He talked too much. He didn't listen. Remember that. Great Proverbs. Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. In the mob life, let me tell you something. You had to be slow to speak. You don't open your mouth. You don't condemn people. You don't say what you don't know what you're talking about. You keep quiet. 
Another great Proverbs that I love. Proverbs 10, 19, when words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. Again, when words are many, transgressions, sins, mistakes is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. The more you talk, the more you bury yourself. What does your lawyer tell you when you get you know, locked up? Hopefully none of you have done that. Keep quiet, don't say a word, keep your mouth shut, don't say anything. Because so many times people bury themselves because those words are recorded. They know what you said. Sometimes you say things just to try to help yourself. You're not helping yourself. Keep your mouth shut. Don't talk. If you don't know what you're talking about, keep your mouth shut. And sometimes if you do know what you're talking about, don't say it. It may not be the appropriate time to say it. You don't want to let people know what you're thinking. You don't want to give them information that can help you out at a later date. So, moral of today's lesson, today's wise guy wisdom, be slow to speak. Be a good listener. It could save your life. It could save you headaches. It could end up in being something very, very positive for you, even in business. Be a good listener. Be slow to speak. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. How do I always leave you on Wise Guy Wisdom Wednesday? I'm going to leave you the same way I leave you every other day. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless. And yes, I'll see you next time.